you came. Who are you? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best movies of 2022. Do you think I made it inside your house before you could rearm? For this list, we'll be looking at movies released in the first half of 2022 that shouldn't be forgotten over the next six months. We're including films that had festival screenings in 2021, but received wider releases this year. What's your favorite movie of 2022 so far? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Lightyear. A year of work for a four minute flight. Isn't that something? <laughs> We're all ready if you are, sir. Lightyear has everything you'd expect from a Pixar film. Stunning animation, inspired humor, and at least one moment that'll get you teary-eyed. Let's get everyone home. Good luck, Captain. <laughs> We're all counting on you! Roger that. What's surprising is how strong the science fiction elements are. Director Angus McLean has made a sci-fi extravaganza with action worthy of Star Wars and ideas worthy of Christopher Nolan. Socks, how long were we gone? Meow, 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 meow. 62 years, seven months, and five days. What? The film remains faithful to the spirit of the Toy Story movies while still being its own entity. The same can be said about Chris Evans' take on Buzz, capturing the classic character's personality without doing a Tim Allen impression. Speaking of toys, we want a Socks robot for Christmas. Buzz? That was utterly terrifying, and I regret having joined you. A Buzz Lightyear origin story could have misfired in so many ways, but this film goes to infinity and you know the rest. To infinity and beyond. Number nine, Emergency. A legendary tour. We're going to seven parties tonight, bro. You should take it easy. Don't get Kunle into any trouble. That boy's black excellence. On paper, Emergency sounds like a standard college comedy with three students trying to get an inebriated young woman to the hospital without arousing suspicion. While humorous hijinks do ensue, the fact that two main characters are black makes the situation all the more complicated. This sharply written social commentary seamlessly blends a farcical premise with the hard-hitting reality of being a person of color in 21st century America. Sean, we breathe the wrong Sean, way. Sean. We die okay, cool, late. Sean, this isn't good, but panicking does not help. Calm down. Look at, hey, man, look at me. Look at me. Okay, think about it statistically. For much of emergency, you'll shift between laughing and feeling a paranoid knot in the pit of your stomach. That knot explodes in the final act when every decision catches up to the characters. With Donald Elise Watkins, RJ Kyler, and Sabrina Carpenter giving the most electrifying performances of their young careers, Emergency deserves immediate attention. What you call number one? Hey, stop! Are you crazy? We didn't hey, do hey, anything stop. wrong. We don't have to do nothing wrong, Kool Aid. The cops are not gonna listen. They just gonna come in here and see three brown guys hanging over this little white girl. Number eight, The Bob's Burgers Movie. You have seven days to make your payment. Seven? It's gonna be okay, Bob. Happy, mm. hopeful, mm. kissy lips. Scott, please. The Belchers make their big screen debut in a film that sits comfortably alongside the Simpsons movie and South Park bigger, longer, and uncut. While the film maintains the animated sitcom's simple charms, the stakes and artistry have been raised for this cinematic event. The world of Bob's Burgers is given more new dimensions and the same can be said about the characters. It should come as no surprise that Kristen Schaal's Louise is a standout with the film proving a deeper dive behind the bunny ears. All right, fine. It's also because of my hat, my ears. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I like wear them a lot. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, now yeah. that you mention it. Some people think Chloe thinks that I'm scared to not wear them. While Louise's hat has been an enigma for over a decade, the real mystery here involves a body in a race against time. For dedicated viewers, it's the ultimate comfort zone. For burger beginners, it's a succulent first bite. Oh my god. Louise, don't go down there, it's dangerous! Ah! Ah! Did you mean to wave your arms all over the place while falling into the hole? Because if so, you nailed it. Yes, it all went great! Number 7, Top Gun Maverick. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. Today's exercise is dog fighting. Two versus one? You've got to be kidding. <laughs> Top Gun Sword is one of the most quotable and iconic action dramas of the 80s. While the long-awaited sequel pays homage to its predecessor around every turn, it never feels stuck in the past. It's a movie for audiences in 2022, having the characters evolve with the times. Although Tom Cruise still has the charisma and energy of a person half his age, Top Gun Maverick is arguably the first film to acknowledge that he's getting up there. Your reputation precedes you. I have to admit I wasn't expecting an invitation back. They're called orders, Maverick. While Maverick is about passing the torch, it's just as much about proving that old dogs can learn and teach new tricks. 
surprisingly emotional and encompassing some of cinema's most jaw-dropping flight sequences. Joseph Kaczynski turns in a sweeping entertainment that would make Tony Scott proud. What he has to teach you may very well mean the difference between life and death. Number six, The Northmen. One day this kingdom will be yours. Thank you, Father. My king. Between The Witch and The Lighthouse, Robert Eggers proved that he could do little wrong. Of course, when an auteur gets a 70 to 90 million dollar budget, some of the magic can be lost. This thankfully isn't the case with The Northmen, which maintains Eggers' signature craft and surrealism on an even grander scale. <laughs> We call the film Shakespearean, but Alexander Skarsgård's Omlith technically predates Hamlet. Even so, Hamlet with Vikings is an appropriate description with tragedy, betrayal, and a revenge story that's unlikely to have a happy resolution. Visually awe-inspiring with superb supporting performances from Anya Taylor-Joy and Nicole Kidman, The Northman is Eggers' epic. While the film is yet to show a profit, time will remember The Northman as one of 2022's best cinematic investments. Why would you stow away to such a hellish place? To find what was stolen from me. And what is that? The kingdom. Number 5, Turning Red. May, what the heck happened? It's just some, you know, inconvenient, uh, genetic thingy I got from my mom. Turning Red ushers Pixar into bold new territory for a variety of reasons. This nostalgic coming-of-age story marks the studio's first feature with an all-female creative team. This is reflected through the film's humorous, insightful, and down-to-earth portrayal of puberty. We know that down-to-earth might seem like an odd way to describe a film with a giant red panda, but if you replace red panda with menstruation, Malin Lee's story suddenly becomes far more layered. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Mom, please! You are now a beautiful, strong flower. Kids will appreciate the film's vibrant animation and comedy, but they'll likely appreciate turning red even more as they get older. While the film is a landmark for female and Asian representation, anyone who's endured the awkward baggage of growing up will identify with May's evolution. I'm changing, Mom. I'm finally figuring out who I am. But I'm scared it'll take me away from you. Number four, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I did what I had to do. our world. You cannot control everything, Strange. The MCU meets the horror genre? It's certainly a promising approach, but even with Sam Raimi behind the camera, a lot of us expected Multiverse of Madness to be tame compared to Evil Dead. Although it doesn't enter that R-rated territory, Doctor Strange's second solo movie pushes the limits of what a PG-13 movie can get away with. The same can be said about Raimi's Drag Me to Hell. It's still an MCU movie with clever quips, rousing action and cameos that'll have the theater erupting in applause. However, it's just as much a Raimi movie with eerie settings, demented characters, and creative deaths that may give youngsters nightmares. Hell, we're still on edge thinking about some of the imagery. Also, all hail Elizabeth Olsen. It's magical. She owns that character so well. It's a very powerful performance with a very powerful character. Number three, X. If daddy catches us, there's no telling what he might do. Some people are looking for a layered horror movie that challenges conventions of the genre. Others just want a good old-fashioned slasher flick that delivers on the graphic content. X somehow manages to have its cake and eat it too, with a side of blood. The plot is straightforward enough to be interpreted as fun escapism that's best experienced with an audience of horror enthusiasts. Behind this simple story, though, is intricate commentary on youth, beauty, and what happens when age claims all of the above. There ain't nobody else out there like you. You know why? Why? Because you got that X Factor. The film has drawn comparison to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which also worked as both a popcorn flick and something more thematic than expected. From the performances to director Ty West's atmospheric vision, it's got that X Factor. I don't think I know who you really are. I saw what you did in the barn. Number two, The Batman. Don't let me hurt you. You better watch it. You know my reputation? Yeah, I do. Do you? After so many interpretations, we weren't sure if the Batman could offer much new. With Matt Reeves in the director's chair, though, the Dark Knight hasn't felt this fresh since Christopher Nolan was at the helm. While the Batman is dark and grounded, it doesn't feel like a retread of Nolan's version. What's black and blue and dead all over?
It's a unique cinematic interpretation that also weaves in some of the otherworldliness of Tim Burton's Batman. We could see this Gotham existing in the real world, but it'd also fit in on the printed pages of the comics. Few interpretations have balanced the two extremes better. It also may be the first live-action feature to put more emphasis on Batman than Bruce Wayne with Robert Pattinson bringing out the character's identity crisis. Our scars can destroy us, even after the physical wounds have healed. But if we survive them, they can transform us. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, the ultimate Easter egg hunt for animation fans. It's called Ugly Sonic, Uglier Crimes. Really? A TV show? You? The unbearable weight of massive talent, best paired with the Nicolas Cage Marathon, or Paddington 2. Can you just stop stalling and answer the question? What is your third favorite movie of all time? Paddington 2. The Outfit, a classic gangster movie meets Hitchcock's Rope. There are a thousand blue boys out there hunting for this. And if they find it, I start shooting, you follow? Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Ugly Sonic isn't the only one having a great year. Okay, quick version. Robotnik is back. I discovered the source of ultimate power. We need to get it back or the world is doomed. Montana Story, a quiet meditation on grief and forgiveness, carried by Haley Lou Richardson and Owen Teague. Seven years ago, she ran away from him. How is it that I'm feeling pity for him right now? I think I should go. You just got here. No, no, this is better. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Morbius. In certain respects, I've succeeded far beyond anything I could have imagined. For the first time in my entire life, I feel good. Forget No Way Home. Sony totally knows what they're doing without Marvel holding their hand. Okay, let, let's get real. Number one, everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm here to tell you, every rejection, every disappointment has led you here to this moment. Don't let anything distract you from it. In this day and age, the only thing harder than getting an original film made is getting people to see it in the theaters. Everything Everywhere All at Once has defied all the odds, becoming A24's highest grossing domestic film through mostly positive word of mouth. The directing duo of the Daniels bends genres, minds, and reality itself in this wildly inventive entry to the ever-expanding multiverse subgenre. You can see how everything is just a random rearrangement of particles in a vibrating superposition. You've seen multiverse movies before, but this one's creativity and themes surpass everything that's come before. In a role originally intended for Jackie Chan, Michelle Yeoh delivers a best actress caliber performance as a laundromat owner on a journey of self-reflection. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll ask, what am I watching and where can I get more, please? You're not unlovable. You're not unlovable. What are you talking about? There is always something to love. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.